is being a medic like being a lawyer? Because I, I think you still, I didn't realise you could do that. You're an MP, but you still do shifts in hospitals, in A&E wards. Yeah, yeah. So so I'm an A&E specialist and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so proud to be be an NHS frontline worker and um, I didn't really have any plan to follow a career in politics it kind of found me by accident and I threw my hat in the ring uh, for the by-election when Sadiq Khan became the mayor of London and I was working as a junior doctor in St George's in Tooting and I, I asked there and then I said if I become an MP if I actually win this does that mean I can't ever work as a doctor again because if they would said yes I couldn't then yeah. I wouldn't have thrown my hat in the ring but yeah I'm, I'm really proud yeah because that's that's who I am I mean of course. you know I happen to be a politician and yes of course that's important but who I am is the person that puts on the scrubs drinks my tea have a polystyrene cup and gets in amongst it it's funny isn't it because I knew for example that you were allowed to run a hedge fund on the side when you were in the house of commons but it never well, occurred to me this is very different these <laughs> yeah, shifts are 12 just, hours well, long just, and very uh, unglamorous I'm obliquely <laughs> suggesting to my audience that being yeah. an A&E doctor might be a more worthwhile contribution to British society than being a hedge fund manager but um, <laughs> we live in strange times we do um, and I mean, you've reminded us of how recently arrived in Parliament you are. So to throw another hat into another uh, arguably m more rarefied ring is, is quite bold. Yeah, well, it takes a bit of courage, but it turns out that courage is contagious because... Um, not a good, not people, a good word to use this morning, Rosanna. Lots of Rosanna. people <laughs> have come on board my campaign. Look, at the end of the day, the Labour Party for me changed my life. It took me out of poverty uh, into Parliament. I, I, you know, I failed on my A-levels. I grew up very, very poor. And, um, and then under a Labour government, I was able to go to Cambridge and study medicine age 24. And... The last election, for me, I felt as though I saw a door close on an entire generation of children that grew up just like me. And I thought, well, what am I going to do about it? I'm going to roll up my sleeves like I do when I work in our NHS frontline. I'm going to roll up my sleeves like I do when I've had three elections in three years, Gosh, one by-election yes. and two general elections. And I'm going to get out there. And, and, and so actually, I started travelling up and down the country, visiting colleagues who'd lost their seats in seats that were leave seats as well, very different to mine. Yes. And I came up with something called the Grassroots Revival Plan, which looks at how we rebuild our party from the grassroots up. I threw my hat in the ring and it turns out that people like my plan. So here I am. How, and, and I also want to pick your medical brains as well as your political ones, of course, this morning. But how... A grassroots revival necessary clearly but but intrinsic to that is some sort of rapprochement between people who are currently unable to be left alone in the same room metaphorically yeah. speaking i mean i find it quite incredible as somebody who almost always votes labor and had no qualms whatsoever voting for my constituency mp Great. my labor constituency mm -hmm. mp at the last election but if i'd lived in islington north i'd just struggled to do that and That's of course same, the people yeah. who would vote for the member for Islington North, in any circumstances whatsoever, are ostensibly under the same umbrella. So how the hell are you going to help unite the people who told a lot of Labour voters to F off and join the Tories and are now furious that they effed off and joined the Tories temporarily. How are you going to tempt them back? Look, it's about rebuilding trust. It's about rebuilding trust within our party by saying that everyone is welcome. We are a broad church. We have to reflect that on our front bench. Um, I'm the only candidate that hasn't uh, actually nominated someone for leader because I think we've got to show yes. unity by our actions. But I've said that as part of my grassroots revival plan, this isn't just about going into communities and talking to members. It's about talking to voters it's about saying to people look you might have loaned your vote to the tories why was that and what can we do to get it back we can't sit in westminster and propose to know why people didn't vote for us anymore and actually that that is where i really connect with people i have shared life experiences i work in our public service and people relate to me and i have the humility to go into communities and say what do we do to get you back do you have the teeth though because not endorsing a leader uh, although you attempt to portray it as a positive, it, it, it could be construed as a bit of a cop-out. No. But if I've you're serious about a gra grassroots rebuilding, then you, you should have fairly clear ideas about what sort of leader you need. And the current contenders are very different potential leaders, aren't they? Mm. Well, first of all, not only do I have teeth, I have more grit, <laughs> energy and determination per square inch of body mass. I just read you're mass. an amateur boxer, so I might yeah, withdraw per square that inch <laughs> Per square inch body mass than anyone you'll ever meet. But I think lots of people talk a fine talk about unifying the party. Yes. But fundamentally, a deputy leader role for me isn't being a leader in waiting. It's about being a campaigner in chief. And if I'm to do that, if my job is going to be on the road going into communities, that is going to have to support whomever the leader is. But that doesn't mean that I can't be a critical friend. That doesn't mean that I can't show strength. I mean, I voted against um, the triggering of Article 50 
while being on the front bench. Mm. And I did that by respectfully phoning up Jeremy and saying, I can't vote for this because my community voted for me to be their voice in Parliament in a by-election the week before the EU referendum. I can't let them believe that they voted for a liar who won't follow through on her promises. But I will be respectful about it. I'll walk through that lobby. I'll do what I have to do. And I won't make a mockery of you in the media. And we navigated through that. And that's what you want out of a deputy leader. You want someone who is able to be strong and have teeth and grit, energy and determination, but can have difficult discussions in private. So you, this is more of a Dennis Healy figure, perhaps, than, I'm a, the own than a Roy Hatton. Well, no, of course you are, but <laughs> yeah. I'm just looking for a historical precedent to this because I like your description of, of, of what a deputy can do. Look, and I, I, I think it's about redefining the role. You know, some people have said, oh, is this just a symbolic role? Is it a nonsense role? And I say for me, like the deputy leader role is what you make it. And we need somebody who's got the humility to travel all around the country into seats we've won, lost and never had and ask people with the greatest of honesty, what will it take to get you back? While also acknowledging that our members often don't feel welcome in a CLP meeting. Yes, they can't have a toxic environment anymore where they come once and don't come again. Why has that happened? I think people have felt as though they can't have differing views to other members freely without being shouted down. I've experienced that. Uh, you know, people have said that to me across the country. And actually, I've said very categorically that with me as deputy leader, there will be no room for any form of anti-Semitism, any form of you know homophobia, any form of um, Islamophobia, any kind of discrimination. Because I really, truly know what it's like to live in a community, not be political and feel as though people can't relate to their politicians. And I want to be different. And I am different. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I've gone from being the least known mm. to being in with a real chance of winning just by speaking honestly about the way I believe we need to move forward and by basically bringing people on board with saying look let's have campaigning here in 2020 no more old school um, leaflets that haven't got you know, nuanced messaging for communities let's bring top lines for the front lines let's involve our councillors and our activists look we have you know documents that show that we are in for a kicking in may in the local elections yes i saw that yesterday yeah and it's hardly surprising is it given the but you know chaos. so many so many people vote for Labour councillors locally but don't vote for us nationally mm. we've got to support our people on the ground our activists who give up their time take annual leave to get a Labour government to get a Labour council and if I win on the 4th of April first I'll ah, be very the 4th happy of, that was my next question yeah Just first for, of all I'll be very happy you know, some mornings where it feels like it's never going to end this Labour <laughs> I know, leadership I know I know I think I think for my two little ones they feel like it's never going to so end just one more month to go yeah one more, one more month to month. go but and then you, you know, may get mummy back or you may not depending on how the result goes well, um, pop your I'll, other hat on now if you would yeah, Rosanna. Pop, pop, pop your scrubs on, yep, so scrubs to on. speak. Have you changed your personal? You mentioned that you're a mother. So have you changed? Is, has family life changed in the context of coronavirus much? What are you doing differently, if if anything? We're singing hand washing songs in you're the morning that, before they go to school. Yeah. yeah, I'm talking about the importance of hand washing. I'm talking about the importance of not touching their face. Um, but I'm also trying not to scaremonger because yeah, you know what it's like on do. these parents' WhatsApp groups. That's Everyone is absolutely. really stressing out yes. about it. But I think it's important that we. Put the positive messages forward. I'm really proud of what our NHS is doing. Um, I do feel that this is exposing how drastically underfunded the NHS have been for a prolonged period of time. However, um, it's really important that we follow advice. And as an A&E doctor, I know that. And... Um, you know, I'm, I'm encouraging my kids and everyone I meet to wash their hands properly, to follow advice. Um, but we do need to look at the road ahead. And I do believe it's going to be a bumpy one. Uh, well, yeah, clearly. And um, just remind us why face touching is so front and centre, just as, as a doctor. Why, because, why am I, because I can't stop um, fiddling with my beard when I'm on the radio. Because I'm virus really droplets will go in through your nose or via your mouth. And um, essentially, you don't want the virus to be reaching your lungs. Right. Yeah. You know your stuff. Well, thanks. Do you want the good news or the bad news? <laughs> um, good news first. You've got a fan. Who's that? Uh, My mum. No, it's a lovely text coming. Oh, that's nice. That's the good news. <laughs> that was the bad news. I'll read it to you. <laughs> Oh, James, I wish you'd done this interview before I filled in my ballot paper for deputy leader. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Don't be that person, everybody. <laughs> well, most people won't have filled in that yeah, ballot paper yeah, for deputy well, leader. Thank and, you and very much to whomever that was. The, the door of the studio is, of course, always open for, for, for some of your rivals. But we wish you well. Thanks ever so much, Thanks Rosanna. so much for having me on. It's really, really lovely to talk to you. Likewise. Did you, you have a patriotic breakfast? Um, I, well, it depends how you consider it. I had Marmite <laughs> on toast, white toast, lots of butter, Marmite, and a sprinkle of mature cheddar cheese. Nice. I say.
That's bold.